So every newspaper business I work with yes. is talking about paywalls yes. and yeah. subscriptions. Yep. Tell us a bit about your thoughts on that sure. opportunity. Yeah, um, you know, our CEO talks about the Washington Post very specifically as a subscription product. And I think that that only has a benefit on the brand side of the business, but I think that the recognition that um, that content isn't free, especially quality and sophisticated consequential journalism like the Post uh, presents. It uh, we've been rapidly growing our subscriber base. We think of everything through a subscriber lens. We they drive two thirds of our page views. They're incredibly engaged, um, and so the more that we have been able to kind of bolster the subscriptions, the more that the overall engagement on the site. And, and how does that subscription core <laughs> help your work with advertisers? Yeah. What does it let you do that say a fully free? Right. I think it starts to really dimensionalize the way that we think about working with advertisers because I think the days of just scale for scale's sake really doesn't exist because there isn't that deep loyalty or trust and then ultimately that halo effect. So the more that we are engaging with our subscribers, the more that we are essentially breeding loyalty at scale, that has a opportunity then to also inform our advertisers via insights. So the more that we understand about our audiences, the more that we're uh, respecting and understanding their time, attention, and their habits, that's something that we then can ultimately really be consultative to our brand partners about. It also starts to open the dimension of like, how do we create utility and tools for subscribers that ultimately, you know, brands can underwrite or better understand. So it's like that incredible, it's, it's the win-win. So there's a lot of talk this year in Cannes about privacy mm, and yes. about regulation. Yes. Yep. Tell us about the US landscape yeah, as you see it. What, absolutely. What's happening? So, I mean, I think we saw a lot of publishers get caught flat-footed on GDPR, and there's no question that there are privacy regulations that are coming to the US, California being the first. We are a privacy-first organization, and, and our CEO is very um, sort of explicit in the fact that we want to protect our users. We're really looking at you know, a cookie-less world. We're preparing for that. And, and I think it, it's, it's not only pragmatic to do it, it's absolutely necessary. And so, you know, we, we have a lot of our own first party data. We are very, very uh, protective of and responsible with that data. The other thing I'm hearing a lot about at the mm -hmm. moment is international. Yes, yes. So is that an opportunity you're looking at? Absolutely. What's, how you plan to expand outside of the US? Sure, so I think something that surprises a lot of people, and frankly myself included when I joined the Post, is that we have 20% of our overall audience internationally. Um, so you know, we have about 25 million uniques coming from Europe, from Asia. Uh, and you know, the first question, I think, when we talk to brands internationally is why? And so, you know, something that we can see is that a lot of these people in other countries, English-speaking countries, um, they'll read their home publication, but they also want to understand what's going on in the world. And there's the covering the centers of power the way that the Washington Post does ultimately is going to have an impact. That policy has an impact on business. It has an impact on their personal lives um, and their passions. So I think what they know that they can come to us for is better understanding an American view, but also how that applies and ha potentially impacts the rest of the world. So another big theme of the moment is collaboration, yeah. partnerships, alliances mm -hmm. yeah. between different industry companies mm -hmm. you know, to, yeah. to deliver common things. Yes. What kind of partnerships are you involved with, so, with other newspaper organizations? Sure. Well, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, there is definitely a, a consortium or, or a partnership among all of us to continue to really support free press. You know, the, the, we have um, an initiative within the Press Freedom, or we have a partnership within the Press Freedom Initiative. We are very vocal within that space. Um, I think other places that we're looking at from an uh, industry and publisher's perspective is we created a tool um, called, a proprietary tool called Zeus about three years ago, and it helps the Washington Post site be among the most viewable. It helps us load very, very quickly. Um, it reduces latency and it ultimately helps drive our overall yield from programmatic. And so we're now licensing that Zeus technology to other publishers to help support their revenue models as well because we think that again as we think about quality and survival and, and making this publisher industry thrive, it's ensuring that there are ways to monetize effectively. So, scarily, we're heading into the 2020s. Yes. 
give us a few thoughts on the big changes you expect to see in the next decade after mm. 10 years of incredible change. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, a lot of the issues that are coming up in the 20, that will inevitably be really, really poignant issues in the 2020 elections will have a massive impact on the next 10 years. So it is privacy. It's also things like climate change for the first time, I think, will be a really important topic. Um, and, and just generally then understanding how consumers expect brands to behave. Um, they, there, there is this flight or this real acceptance that um, consumers want brands to take a point of view. They want them to have a purpose. They want to understand what their values are. And I think that that will have, with, with this sort of continued uh, discussions among publishing uh, partners and who you decide to align with, I think that'll have a lot of impact there. I think the platforms, obviously, tech regulation is the other kind of thing that is inevitably going to have a take center stage for, for 2020. And um, I think that the, the platforms are making enormous strides, but I think they're going to really be put to task um, to make sure that they're above board.